Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on Slant Lens, we're gonna do a little macro photography. We're gonna take pictures of splashes. This is such a fun thing to do. If you're just a photo nerd and you wanna do something that's just fun to do when it's a rainy day or it's winter time, or just because you wanna lock yourself away and shoot away, this is a fun thing to do. You know, it's a much different device than the first one that they released. It has a much more modern look. It's got machined aluminum nozzle, which is the most important thing here because it gives you a much sharper drop and it gives you much more control. It's made it more predictable. It's made it so I can get the drops exactly where I want them, so it works much better. There's some other things about this, though, that are absolutely fabulous, that are fantastic. One is it's got USB power. It used to be you had to take it apart to get to the battery. Now that USB power is just, it runs continuously. So you don't have to worry about it powering down or losing power. That is perfect. The app is fabulous. It allows you to add your drops. It allows you to give delays, be able to play with that. It's just a very easy app to use. So it's an updated app as well. The unit is much more modern looking. It's much, it's just a nice new design. It's got a, you twist this out here, it takes the nozzle off. You wanna take and dump this out, change the water in it, be able to change the color of the water or everything. It just makes it easy to leave this in your setup. You've got a quarter 20 on the bottom of this. So the magic arm can come in here on the quarter 20. So this comes with a, a either a hot shoe or cold shoe kind of adapter, or you take this off. I got it on the quarter 20 on the end of this Savage C-Stand here. And you could also do it, just put a plate on this and put a Naka Swiss plate and you could put this onto a tripod if you want to you know, suspend it off a tripod. I just like the C-stand because it gets it out, out, out over the table where we're working. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to work with. So we're going to roll a Dubatine out, which is just black material that really sucks up the light. We're going to put that underneath our clear bowl. And that's going to make sure we don't get any reflections of anything from this room into the bowl and just gives us clean white. We're going to put a white background up behind us so that we have the ability to change the color on that background. We can put a gel on the light, make it whatever color we want, but that just gives us a lot of different options. Kind of a clean canvas here we can work with. Dark underneath the bowl, white in the background. So let's get that set up. Let's talk about how we're going to light our liquid here. I'm going to light this just like you would a beverage in a glass. I'm not going to aim my light at the liquid in this first setup. I'm going to aim my light at the white card behind the liquid. I don't need a very large white card because it's a very small macro shot. There's black all around this card because of the room. The light's only hitting this white card, giving me a great exposure. So it gives, it gives me definition to the right and left side of that uh, liquid. So as that splash goes up, I've got a nice white from behind. It's gonna open up that flash and make it look bright. But then if I needed to, I could put a black card on each side to give me a black definition line. I use two of the Westcott FJ400s. I dial them all the way down to 2.5 on T mode because I want them to give me a fast flash duration to freeze the liquid, and that's gonna help to stop everything and to really freeze the liquid in place. You might think that's not a big deal, but it is. One of the biggest problems with doing something like this is that it blurs. It's splashing, it's going very quick, and so you, on a regular strobe, if you just aim that at it or aim at this card, there's a long flash burn and it's gonna make that liquid blur. So focus was kind of a problem with this little setup. And so what we did is we put two Platypot Ultras, one on each side of the gooseneck. I've got an A-clamp on it that'll hold that ruler in place. And so when I turn on my camera, I can focus right on that ruler. The way I know that's in the right place is when I hit the app and it uh, shoots for me, it's the drop is being cut in half by that ruler. So now I know it's gonna be in focus. I've got my Canon EOS R here. I'm gonna put a 90 millimeter lens. That's the Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens, which allows me to get in tight so I can close, uh, focus close. Then from the camera, I'm gonna run a cable up to the Myop Splash. And then I'm gonna run a cable from the Myop Splash to my strobes. I'm gonna set my camera on bulb, on B. Now in the app, I'm gonna put this on flash sync. I'm not going to try to freeze the splash with my shutter. I'm gonna freeze it with the freeze mode of the FJ400. So they've got a mode, the T mode there, that will shorten the flash duration and freeze the water when it splashes but I have to be in a dark room because even though my exposure is only going to be about a second in that bulb mode, it's long enough that it'll pick up any light that's in the room. So the app is pretty seamless. It just searches for devices. It'll look to see what MyOps device you have available. It found the uh, MyOps Splash. I've got it plugged in, I turned it on. Once I hit the uh, little corner here, 
it brings me right to my, uh, my setup. I can click on this, my first drop size. I click on that, I can say 50, which is what I did. Hit done. When I hit the corner, it takes me back, it's now at 50. If I hit below here, there's my second drop. I have the drop size and I have the delay. So when I hit the delay right here, I can now change this delay time. I can go 45, hit done in the corner. Now I can click on my second drop and drop size. See it there, I can see the delay. I'm gonna do 45, that's all set. Then I can come down here to flash. And before the flash goes off, how long of a delay do I want? Well, I can either flash it or uh, trigger it with the camera or I can trigger it with the flash. I'm triggered with the flash and that bulb mode on the camera. So I'm gonna hit the delay here and I have it set at 200. Now, if I go back here and say, you know what? I just don't, I only wanna do a single splash. You can keep adding drops all day long if you want. Add a third drop and hit okay. Doesn't matter, you can keep adding drops as many as you want. Another great tip is write down all your settings and the frame numbers. Because when you get something that's working, you're gonna go, I wanna go back to that. Because we'd go along here and start changing things. You're going, you know what, this is not working as well as what we had before. Let's go back to the last time we liked an image. We'd go back to that and start from there to adjust again. So keep good notes. It's gonna make this go a lot faster for you. Another thing that really affects how the water drops interact with each other is the ripples from the last water drop. So if I hit this, I've got all these ripples going in and out right now and there's movement in the water. When I started waiting a little longer for the water to calm, I was getting a more consistent result. So that's pretty important. Don't shoot too fast. Be patient. Those are looking really cool, but then we put some food coloring in it. I think that looked fabulous. Because of the white from behind, it kind of gives you that white surface of the water, but then this red is kind of erupting out of it and looked very cool. So let's take a look at some of those images. So let's wrap this up. This new MyApps is such an improvement over the first version. You've got the aluminum nozzle, which just gives you a, a great sharp drop. The app is easy to work with. You've got continuous power with that USB power supply. It just makes it so that you can use this continuously and it, it works really well. I did find that I felt like I was getting more predictable uh, kind of outcome when the water was lower down below this straw just a little bit. That last little bit there seemed to be one after another was really hitting exactly where I wanted it to. That was just my experience. I don't know if that's just a fluke or what, but that was certainly my experience. So I had a great time doing this. This is fun to do, and it's an interesting thing to be able to, to set up and to learn kind of the principles of macro photography, depth of field, getting in close, coordinating that with the splashes. So it really, it's an interesting, fun kind of thing to do. So if you're a photo nerd, you're gonna wanna check one of these things out. So leave us a comment. We wanna see some of the images you've done, and make sure you subscribe to us here at the Slide of Lens and keep those cameras rolling and keep on splashing.